Hey, this is Timmy G. Welcome to my Logic Pro X tutorial mini-series on how to make a synth riser five different ways. Each tutorial will explain how to make a synth riser in a different way. Even though I'm using Logic Pro in this tutorial series, you can use these ideas in just about any digital audio workstation. Let's get started. All right, so the last one we'll do, I'll mute this one, is going to be a little different. It's going to it's kind of uh it's kind of a weird one, but it's it's pretty cool, it's pretty unique. Um, I'm going to open a new audio track. You could do a MIDI track here, but I'm going to do a new audio track. doesn't matter what the input is. And what we're going to do is we're going to open up the test oscillator. So use that. It's an audio effect, interestingly enough, not an input. So I'm going to click here, go down to Utility, and click Test Oscillator. And right away, we hear this noise. I'll turn it down for now. But we hear this frequency being played. So uh, we don't want that. You could automate this, but it doesn't sound that great. I've tried it. Um, we want the sine sweep. And I'll bring this back up. What the sine sweep does is, depending on what, what you tell it to do, it will take a certain amount of time to go from one frequency that you start at to the end frequency. So I'm going to say a couple of things. First, uh, linear... I don't suggest using linear for this purpose. I'd suggest using logarithmic. Um, if you use linear, it basically spends very little time on the lower frequencies and spends a lot of time on the high frequencies, whereas logarithmic spends a pretty equal time on any frequency no matter what. Um, so I'd say uh, for time, we, we this is an 8-bar uh, riser, so we want to see how many seconds 8 bars is. So I'm going to click on the 8 bars here. And right here we see at the top, um, it's about 12.2 seconds. It doesn't have to be exact. So I'm going to go to this time here and make this, uh, I'm going to just make it 12. It doesn't have to be 12.2. Um, so this means that our, our uh, buildup, our riser, will be about 12 seconds. Okay. And if you can't see this, you can um, click here and edit all of your, what you can view in this little monitor here. Um, but anyway, so now for start frequency and end frequency, uh, 20 hertz and 20,000 hertz are pretty much the extremes of human hearing. I would suggest starting a little bit higher and ending a little bit lower. So maybe start around 50 and end anywhere from 5,000 to 7,000. I'll say, yeah, I'll say 7,000. So anyway, here's what that will sound like. And to get that noise started, I hit trigger uh, right here. So uh, when the trigger's set for single, it just you click it and then it does it once. But you can also do continuous, which means I'll just show you what it means for one second. It, continuous means as it as you would expect, it keeps going. So here's what it would sound like. It just keeps going. But we only need one, so I'll go back to 12 seconds here. And since this is just a sine wave, it sounds pretty boring to be honest. So what I'm going to do to make it sound uh, a lot cooler and a pretty easy way to make it sound cooler is to just add distortion. So I'm going to go down here to distortion and just regular distortion. And I'm going to turn the drive all the way up to 40 or to 50. And I'm going to turn the output down to about 30. And then the tone, maybe about uh, 5,000. And here's what it sounds like. So I was I, you can actually put the output a little higher, um, but this makes it this makes it sound a little bit more than just a sine wave. Has some higher frequencies. Um, it's a bit a little bit more powerful. Uh, anyway, the problem with this test oscillator is it's not easy to record. So you kind of have to go through some hoops. Well, not really, but you have to you have to do a little bit extra to record the sound. So the way to do this, and we can close out of this stuff. Actually, we're going to need the test oscillator in a moment, but. We want to send this not to the stereo, but we want to send this to a bus. It doesn't matter what bus we have. So bus 2 is already being used, so I'll say I'll send it to bus 1. Um, but once again, it doesn't matter. 
And then you're going to want to make, oops, you're going to want to make a new track, new audio track. And then the input, you want to make that bus one, which is the output of the test oscillator. So now I have this track created. And what this track is going to do is just play what this track is making. Um, and that is the test oscillator. So when I, when I start this test oscillator here, it's actually going to eventually come out of this track. So I'll stop that right now. So um, I'm going to turn the recording on, go to the beginning. And since we have other tracks, just make sure they're all muted here. But anyway, I'm going to hit R to record, or this button right here. doesn't matter. And the metronome doesn't matter. But now I'm going to hit this trigger. I just turned the cycle off because my cycle was on for some reason. Okay. And now I hit stop, and now we can see this is our waveform for our synth our riser. So we'll close out of this. And right now, um, by the way, the test oscillator is mono. This is set as stereo. I'm going to change that to mono now. So anyway, I'm going to listen here to our, our uh, riser. So now what I can do is edit this a bit. I'll zoom in on this and I can bring this to the beginning and kind of line it up with the rest of our risers. So anyway, I'll mute this because we don't need this anymore. But now I will play all the risers together and it might, I have no idea how this is going to sound. It might sound good, might sound bad. Um, and then in a moment, I'm going to show you uh, some other risers that I've done to attract that I'm that I made for this or for a previous tutorial and then show you what it sounds like with the risers and without the risers. So first we'll listen to this. So it sounds pretty cool. Sounds like there's a lot of tension building up and ready to hear something happen. Who knows what? So now I'm going to play this build up um, with the with the risers first, and then without the risers. So here's it. Here's the build up with the risers. And now I'm going to play the build up without the risers. Just the drums and the uh, the bass. And you can see how how much uh, emptier it sounds without those risers. So that was a pretty lengthy tutorial, um, but hopefully you gained something out of it. And if you like this video or if it helped you out, be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or video suggestions, be sure to leave a comment. If you want to see more content like this and check out my original music, DJ performances, or DJ tutorials, be sure to subscribe to my channel. Thanks a lot. Yeah.